What's going on guys? Welcome back to We Want Picks. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckled Salamander, here to bring you my quick pick video for UFC London coming up on Saturday morning. But before we get into UFC London, make sure you go to WeWantPicks.com, become a premium member today. It's only $10 a month. Last week I went 10 and 3 in picks, and this week I think I might just go 15 and 0 just for the hell of it. So make sure you go to WeWantPicks.com, become a premium member today. And because we got 15 fights, let's jump right into the action with the first fight for UFC London. First fight, we got Jafel versus Daniel. Both these guys are pretty similar stylistically. They both can strike. They both can grapple. I actually both, I think they both are better grapplers than they are strikers. But in this matchup, it comes down to aggression, intensity, and who I know is going to be the offensive weapon in this fight. And I think it's going to be Daniel. When I watch Daniel fight, I know that he is moving forward, especially in the first round. He just walks people down, throws the strikes, will try to get on your back. And yes, I have seen Jafel offensive wrestle. I've seen him offensive strike. When, but when somebody is in his face, when somebody is pushing the pressure in the striking, he will be the one on the back foot trying to counter. When somebody is pushing the pressure in the offensive wrestling, in the grappling, he will be on his back. He will play the guard game. You saw that in his last fight. The only thing that worries me about Daniel in this matchup is he will get tired. He will push such a pace in the first round. Pace? He will push such a pace in the first round that he might get tired. And this could be a situation where he dominates, but Jafel survives wins a close second round, and then pulls out a decision. But I still have faith. I want to put my money and my pick on a guy that I know is going to have the offensive output to win a decision or get a finish. And for me, it is going to be Daniel in this matchup. I'm going to be watching it closely. If this starts getting close to the end of the second round and nobody's put away, there could be a live bet situation. But I'm going with Daniel Barres. In this matchup, let's move on to the next. Shauna versus Bruno Brazil. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one. I think this is a pretty low-level MMA matchup. I don't know if there's any money to be made. I know a lot of people are probably going to be on Bruno Brazil in this matchup. But I'm telling you right now that I don't, I, I can't trust that girl. I mean, there was a reason that I put my lock of the week against Bruno Brazil because she is just so casual in her striking she probably is the better striker in this matchup but if you get in her face we've seen what happens she's just so casual with her defense the chin up just straight back and I think that Shauna Bannon is the better grappler in this match matchup as well and if she makes this dirty if she gets in the pocket gets in the face gets in the clinch gets her to the ground I see Bruna Brazil doing the same thing she did in her last fight and that is fold underneath the pressure so I'm going with Shauna Bannon here not going to spend a ton of time on I'm not betting it I'm not doing anything crazy live stream we might do something a little bit wild on this fight but I'm taking Shauna just to get nasty just to get dirty get this fight on the ground and that is where she is going to excel but low level MMA matchup let's move on Chris Duncan versus Yanal and I think straight up and honest I believe that the gas tank is going to win in this fight. What does concern me a little bit is Chris Duncan and his chin. You've seen him get dropped before. And you know, coming off that huge knockout win. But I think that says more about Sam Patterson. And me... Angelo, this whole entire channel, we're on Yanal in that matchup because we knew that Sam Patterson was a little bit of a fraud. So I would take that with a little bit of grain of salt with that knockout. I know a lot of people are going to be, oh my God, he just knocked out another prospect. Now he's coming against Chris Duncan. He's going to knock him out again. I would pump the brakes a little bit on that. Yanal is really kind of a grinder. He wants to get in your face. He wants to get you to the ground. And Chris Duncan has really, really improved his wrestling at ATT with Grant Dawson, with Tiago Moy says you've seen the grappling kind of come into his own now he doesn't have the best takedowns but he will kind of hold and hold and kind of do that Grant Dawson kind of hold you against the fence and then try to take you down and I believe I can trust his gas tank from what I've seen a little bit more in this matchup so I think it's gonna be a close fight I think the gas tank is going to win I'm gonna be a little bit concerned early with the chin of Chris Duncan but I'm gonna go with the favorite here slight favorite with Chris Duncan to get the done I like his camp a little bit more of the ATT coming over good game plan they've been killing it lately I like Chris Duncan to kind of weather the early storm of Yanal and then just kind of wear him down to maybe a boring decision win but I'm gonna take Chris Duncan 
in this matchup. Let's move on to the next. We've got Ketlin and Panny. And to be honest, I think this is a pretty cut and dry matchup as well. I think they are very stylistically the same type of fighter. I'm going to give the speed advantage to Panny in this matchup, but I don't know if it's going to really matter because I like the boxing of Ketlin. I like her control. I like her power. And I like her physicality in this matchup. Panny, to me, can kind of get me moved around a little bit. You saw that with Lena Landsberg. She was in the clinch. She was kind of moved around a little bit by Lena. Her game planning wasn't the best because why would you clinch with Le with Lena Landsberg? She was dropped by Lena Landsberg. I like Ketlin with the power advantage in this, but this could be a back and forth fight, a close fight, a decision fight, as women MMA fights typically are, but I'm going to take the power advantage in Ketlin. I think she is just a little bit better everywhere in what is a pretty stylistically similar matchup. So I'm going to go with Ketlin in this, but no money. Let's move on. Brada versus Brian Barbarino. And I'll be... Uh, the, immediately I see Brian Barberino on a card I'm like oh wait let me bet against him because we know Brian Barberino is not a super dangerous guy he's definitely he's definitely tough he's definitely durable right but you know in these matchups he can get beat up he can get taken down against a guy like Muradov it's like it seems like it's pretty cut and dry Muradov is going to be my pick but what worries me about Muradov in this matchup is kind of how he brawls out of situations you saw when Gerald Mearshart was getting in his face he was a back against the fence and really just kind of open up to brawl out of the situation instead of just covering up getting back to space getting a takedown obviously against jail he was good he didn't want to get takedown but against brian if brian is moving forward with pace with pressure hasn't been hurt and you've seen brian do this in the past where he just kind of works through works through and grinds people down i don't want Muradov opening up against the fence, uh, against pressure. I want him to just kind of turtle up, circle back to space, get some takedowns, and the takedowns is where he should excel in this matchup. The grappling against Brian. Brian can be taken down. I would just take him down, control him, work those positions. If you want to strike a little bit, Brian's not a super dangerous guy, but I don't want Muradov to try and take this guy's head off, get tired. Brian is landing volume. Muradov is opening up back against the fence, and Brian is landing shots in the pocket while Muradov is trying to knock this guy out to get the pressure off him. So I am going Muradov in this matchup, but I think the odds are, you know, for a guy as tough as Brian, they're a little bit wide. I do have a little bit of pause for concern in the Muradov side, but he should be able to get this done, no questions asked. But there's just something in the back of my mind that's telling me, let's wait and see, play maybe a little bit of a prop instead of chasing the money line, but Muradov is my pick for this matchup. Next, we've got Mick and Jamal. And in this matchup, I think that Mick needs a take down early to me with the hand speed with the boxing he just seems a little bit stuck in the mud to quote connor in this match especially against a guy like jamal and unfortunately for him i think jamal can kind of do it all i mean he, he seems like he's got decent striking he can throw those head kicks he's got takedowns of his own he doesn't seem like he really gasses too much mick just needs to kind of out dog him in this fight i don't know if, if jamal is a guy that you can really out dog in this matchup can he get an early takedown maybe wear on the gas tank but even in that contender series fight with Mick you kind of saw him getting dogged and yes he kind of turned that around against a guy that had like a minute 30 of cardio but he was taken down and against Jamal I think Jamal can get the takedowns even when this just win the striking if he wants to so I'm actually pretty high on Jamal in this match we'll see if Mick has made some adjustments made some improvements with his hands maybe does you know win the the wrestling and the grappling exchanges that's how, in my mind, he's going to need to win this fight is with the wrestling, with the grappling. Against a guy like Jamal, I just do not see him getting that done. So I am going with Jamal in this matchup. Let's move. Mark versus Joel. We'll just see if Joel, first of all, is going to make weight for this matchup. We'll see if this fight even happens. But in this matchup, we know who Joel is. He is a guy that is a weight bully. He wants to be on his back, throwing up triangles, doing all the jujitsu stuff. You saw his strike against Tiago come into a effect his long striking throwing those elbows he does have decent striking but in his striking like a tall guy he does get hit and against like Mark who came in in his last few fights was trying to be the wrestler I know against MJ he really kind of struggled with the pressure the range of MJ the striking of MJ the, the the takedown defense of MJ if he wants to wrestle Joel Joel will go to the ground if I'm Mark not going to the ground. I am striking with this guy because Mark is a very fast, explosive striker, can can stimulate the, the legs of Joel with those leg kicks, and I think that he can get to the chin of Joel. If you watch Joel strike, yes, he is good striker, but he gets 
hit and he if he gets hit against a guy like mark i think mark could put this guy out so we'll see because mark is one of those guys that's a little bit too casual sometimes he's a little bit cocky he's a little bit he's smiling there he's laughing sometimes he doesn't have that sense of urgency so it's really kind of hard to bet on a guy like mark in this matchup but I believe he has the striking to get it done. Joel doesn't really have offensive wrestling, so if it wants to go to the ground, it's going to be up to Mark to get it to the ground. I would withstand all of that. Just strike with Joel. Try to find that chin. You're an explosive striker, and he doesn't really have the best striking defense. So I'm going with the upset here with Mark to get it done. I think he can find the chin of Joel, and once you find that chin and you go to the ground, you better finish him quick or you might get thrown up in a submission. So I'm going with Mark to get the upset in this matchup. Danny Roberts versus Johnny Parsons. And in this matchup, listen, Danny Roberts is a very overall well-rounded fighter. But he doesn't really, you, and you hear me say this a lot, there's a lot of guys that are, are good everywhere, but, but not great anywhere. And against a guy like Johnny Parsons, who in my mind is sneaky, sneaky fast and has sneaky, sneaky power, he's one of those Muay Thai fighters that just kind of waits and waits and waits. And I hope that he doesn't wait too long in this matchup because this could be a situation where if he's waiting too long, now he is losing a decision. But a guy against a guy that is Chinny and Danny Roberts and his speed and his power, when he goes, you see the striking abilities of Johnny Parsons. And when he goes and he lands, I believe that he can hurt Danny Roberts in this match. And I'm actually pretty high on him. He opened up as the underdog. I actually try to bet him at as an underdog, and by the time I put my bet in, he flipped to a slight favor, but I like him in this matchup versus Danny Roberts. He's got he's got sneaky trips as well to get fights to the ground if he wants to, but in the Muay Thai, I believe he is going to land the, he's going to have speed and land power on Danny Roberts and put this guy out, so I'm pretty high on Johnny Parsons in this matchup. Let's move on. A.V. Grant versus Daniel Marcos, and Daniel Marcos is definitely the better striker in this matchup, the cleaner striker. Again, he is one of those guys that once he has you hurt, once he starts over opening up, he will open up and he will put people away. And there's a reason why he is an undefeated prospect. But that kind of worries me against a guy like Davy Grant. Davy Grant was basically, I mean, he was given a win by Keith Peterson in that last matchup. He was getting beat up and outfought in that from Bell to Bell in his last fight. It is his ability to stay in fights and still be dangerous even when he is losing. Is why he won that fight. He will never be out of a fight. And against a guy like Daniel Marcos, who when he has you hurt, when he has you hurt, he is going to open up. He is going to throw wild stuff. He is going to try to put you away. And against a guy like David Grant, that can be very, very dangerous. I mean, David Grant fights like a dog that's backed into a corner when he is hurt. And if he is throwing at the right way when Daniel Marcos is throwing it the wrong way, he can definitely put out Daniel Marcos. But I got to go with what I know in this matchup. And that is Daniel Marcos is going to be the better striker. He is undefeated for a reason. I think he can hurt and win this fight against Davy Grant. So Daniel Marcos is my pig. Lerone versus Cooley Bow. And let's just get the one thing straight. Lerone Murphy did not win his last fight. I have no idea how he won that decision. But he was winning most of the striking exchange. I don't want to say most of them. But he was winning striking exchanges, and it was the wrestling that really lost him that fight. Josh Cooley Bell doesn't really have that type of wrestling, but to me, he is like a Brandon Roy Vall type of fighter. For some reason, just keeps finding ways to win fights. I don't want to make it seem like he's not a good fighter, because he is a very good fighter. But I would I would list him as a very opportunistic fighter and when I watched Laurel Murphy fight one of the reasons why that last fight was so close and one of the reasons why I think he lost that fight was because he does give people opportunities either in the grappling or in the striking he does get hit he can get out grappled he can get taken down I know he's undefeated and I know he's a very very talented fighter but he does give people opportunities and against an opportunistic fighter a fighter that can get in with the sneaky shots with weird submissions everything about Josh Cooley Bow is opportunistic I am going with the underdog Josh Cooley bow to find a way to get this done. I think there's going to be a little bit of a karma situation where Laurel Murphy didn't deserve to win that last fight. He is going to come back to bite him in front of his home fans against Josh Cooley bow Josh Cooley bow gets it done against Laurel Murphy. Jai versus Ziam, and I'm a big fan of both these guys. And this is comes come down to speed 
versus power in the striking. I think Jai definitely has the speed advantage. Zeon definitely has the power advantage in my mind. But I think this fight's going to come down to the grappling and who is able to win those wrestling exchanges. You saw Jai has picked up the wrestling in his last few fights. Ziam in that last fight was looking great with the wrestling after getting absolutely dominated by T-Rex two fights ago. What Ziam is going... That's that's the biggest question mark to me. What Ziam is going to show up for this fight? Because if it's the Ziam from the last fight... I don't, I don't know if he's going to steamroll Jai, but Jai can get hurt. He can get out-wrestled, and that is what Zeon does the best. But if this is the Zeon that shows up, that was the the T-Rex Zeon, he can get absolutely steamrolled by Jai in this matchup. So I'm going with Zeon here because I think he's got the power. I think he can win the wrestling exchanges. He's looked locked in in his last fight. And I just think the power advantage is going to be there against Jai. Jai is fast. He could beat him to the punch. Zeon does fight with his back against the fence a little bit too much. But he does have the power to kind of back that up. So I'm taking Zeon in this matchup. Craig versus Andre Muniz. And Paul Craig is basically just, I mean, he is just, I mean, he's just Ryan Hall. He's a 205 Ryan Hall coming down to 185. I have no idea how this guy is going to lose an additional 20 pounds off that 205 frame if you watch him weigh in at 205 i don't know where the 20 pounds is going to come in at. so we'll see if he is able to make the weight if this fight goes to the ground paul craig is always going to be live he is a tough dude but he is a jiu-jitsu nerd he doesn't want to be on top he doesn't want to strike he doesn't have takedowns he just wants to be on his back and throw up those triangles but if it gets there Obviously, he is live. He has shown time and time again that he can get the job done. But Andre Muniz showed on Brennan Allen. Was he? I mean, he was out striking Brennan Allen. Yes, I know he ended up losing that fight and getting submitted, but he should win the striking exchanges, not engage in the grappling. But even if it goes to the ground, he should be good enough to win this fight versus Paul Craig. So I'm going with Andre Muniz in this matchup. Nathaniel Wood versus Touchy Feely. And I'm going Nathaniel Wood all the way in this matchup. And I think this is one of the best values on this card. Dan and Nathaniel Wood came in with this featherweight de debut versus Charles Rosa, a very dangerous, durable guy, got the job done. Again, Charles Jordan, a very dangerous, durable guy, got the job done. No real issues in either one of those fights. Andre Feely is another dangerous guy, but just not quite as durable as those last two fighters in my mind. And Nathaniel Wood is so good in that up-close boxing. The crazy, you saw those crazy trips he had against Charles. He just seems so dialed in and sees everything in every single fight. And just, it feels like he always knows where he wants to be in a fight. And I have all the respect in the world for Touchy Feely. He is a tough dude. He is going to be a dangerous guy, especially live, but he does get hurt and he does get hit. And Nathaniel Wood is going to be in the pocket in the boxing exchanges and really kind of lighting this guy up, wearing him down. I'm looking for a second or third round finish for Nathaniel Wood in this matchup. Ali versus Julia. And Julia is a very dangerous fight. I, I don't think she's getting the respect that she deserves in this matchup because if this fight does to the ground, if she's able to get early takedown, Molly is in big, big trouble. The issue with Julia is... She has basically no stand-up game. She is tough. I would give her, you know, I think people are discrediting her toughness a little bit. But she really has no stand-up game. Her takedowns aren't great. And when she does get people to the ground, it is arm, bar, or bust. You saw that against Chelsea. Had the positioning, was on top, chased the arm bar, lost it, end up getting dominated in that fight. And against a girl like Molly, I don't see Molly being taken down by the takedowns of Julia Aaron Blanchfield was a little bit of a different animal in that right, and Molly should be able to dominate with the pressure, the striking exchanges. So this is, I mean, this was set up in front of the home fans for Molly to win for a reason. Hopefully she doesn't end up on her back, but Molly McCann should get this. Mid time, Tom Aswell versus Marcin Taboya. And this is what it is. I mean, this was set up for Tom Aspinall in front of the home fans to get a quick early finish. But I would say right now that Tybora, obviously, the, the I mean, obviously the strategy for Tybora is just survive, survive, survive. Try to get to that second round. Try to get to that third round. Try to get to that fourth round and just see what happens. But this should be quick, fast, in a hurry for Tom Aspinall. He should be able to get the takedowns. We've seen, you know, Tybora getting takedown before. If he wants to strike, he can strike. But I imagine he's going to play this safe, get the win 
in, get out of there, get the takedown, get the submission, and get the hell out of there on your return fight. So, I mean, there isn't a whole lot to break down in this fight. Tybora is a tough dude. He is durable. But I think Tom Aspinall comes in, gets the takedown, gets the submission win, and get the hell out of there for UFC London. This has been the full card breakdown for UFC London. Tune in for the Tuesday breakdown with me and Angela. We're going to argue about a whole bunch of stuff. Lock of the Week video coming up Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. Live stream Saturday morning. My name is Jacob, a.k.a. The Freckled Salamander. Like the video, subscribe if you're new. I'm out, babe.